All right, I guess it's time for me to give you an update on what's going on in my Toro car rental business. One of my vehicles was supposed to be returned about five days ago. It's not here and she hasn't paid. What are we going to do? I'm going to break all that down for you as well as some of the other things that's been happening in the business in my first three weeks. A quick recap right about now. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, Chris Monroe, and I'm right back at you with another Toro video. This video is being brought to you by WokeRealEstate.com, your one-stop shop to learn everything in real estate and more. Check it out. Now, as far as this vehicles on the Toro platform, I ran into a couple of hiccups. So my first vehicle, you saw I had that on. It's actually did, I want to say, three or four rentals now. Um, and I was on a breakdown how all of them have gone. But right now, my vehicle is not here. And it's not been paid for. It's gone. So basically, so my first trip on the platform, you kind of know how that went. The lady returned it a little late. I charged her some extra fees. I got some extra money for that deal. That's good. That's history. Check out the other video for that. So my second trip, um, the guy wanted to rent it for one day. You know, usually like, why people rent a car for one day? And he wanted to rent it for at 10 o'clock at night. Kind of creepy, but I'm like, whatever. You know, I'm a newbie, so I'm like, do it anyway, whatever. So come to find out, he took my car all the way to Chicago, from St. Louis to Chicago, because I got unlimited miles on there. Ah, what was I thinking? Um, and so he was able to go ahead and take the vehicle all the way to Chicago, put about 700 and something miles on it, brought it back. It was a good rental. He just got a hell of a deal. I think the rental was like 50 bucks or something. And uh, yeah, he made out like a big dog going all the way to Chicago and picking up his um, son from college. Now this third rental, this is where it starts getting funky. This lady here, and I probably shouldn't have rented it to her to be honest, because even before I accepted the rental, I noticed that she um, had bad reviews or mi mixed reviews, I guess we could say. Not really bad, not really good, like three star, you know, four star, two star. Oh, she's late. She's always late and she's definitely always late because that's exactly what she did to me. She picked up my vehicle late the first day she picked it up. Um, she drove the vehicle. She, I think she rented it for like three or four days the first time. And then she was late bringing it back. So she said, oh, I'm going to extend it. I'm going to extend it. So she extended it for one day. The next day came. I'm like, hey, yeah, what's going on? You're going to be turning it in or what? Because, you know, when you get your car back, you got to either meet them or tell them where to, you know, drop it off or how you're going to arrange pickup. So typically we want them to drop them off back to us because we don't want to be going out trying to chase down a vehicle that's, you know, rented out to somebody else. So basically she extended her rental again for like four days. So that took her all the way up to like December 22nd ish, something like that. And so she ended up not bringing it back today is december 30th that i'm shooting this video 2020 and um i'm thinking that oh well, what's going on why she didn't bring my vehicle back so i call her she not answering the phone i text her she not answering text i message her through the turo app because you know they got a messenger in there i'm like hey yeah what's going on you're gonna be turning it in or if you're gonna keep it it's gonna be some additional charges that's a little thing they make you do if you don't tell them that there's going to be some additional charges you won't be able to charge those additional charges on the platform so i did everything like they say to do and it's very important to read those terms of service to see exactly what you're supposed to do in whatever situation because they break it all down for you right on the app so i did everything i supposed to do but like i said she basically went ghost so december 22nd went by i had a rental scheduled for another four days really right back to back that next morning for four days and i had another rental Scheduled right back to back from that another four days for somebody else. I'm like, dang, I got all these bookings. I'm looking at the calendar like, ooh, wee, look at the money. Lo and behold, she didn't bring my vehicle back. So she basically made me lose revenue in the business. Um, rentals that could have went out another eight days or so or whatever, right? 
for the rest of the month. So I, I had it basically booked up the rest of the year if she had brought my vehicle back. So I went through the process of, you know, going through Turo's claims and say, hey, yeah, uh, my vehicle wasn't returned. They say, yeah, you got to wait 24 hours and then call us back and we'll do whatever the next po process is. So 24 hours goes by. Uh, I contact them back. Actually, they contacted me back right at 24 hours. It was kind of creepy. I was on the phone talking to the agent and then my phone rang from the other side another agent from Turo. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to hang up with you and talk to them since they already know what's going on with my thing. So, uh, with my file. So basically we looked at it, we figured out what's going on. She told me that, yeah, here's what you got to do. You got to, um, you know, basically mail out this notice to say, um, I guess it's different. It varies from state to state, but I had to mail out a notice to say, yes, a demand letter basically saying you must turn this vehicle in. It's late. Uh, we want the vehicle returned basically so you send out the notice you wait 72 hours after that 72 hours then you can go file a police report to report your vehicle stolen and then go through that song and dance lo and behold we go through that whole process i'm in that process now and i'm actually uh, have an investigator that's been calling me every day letting me know updates like yeah she texts me back she wasn't caught she wouldn't answer the phone like she wasn't answering the phone for me but she texts him back the investigator saying that yeah the vehicle got towed is at a tow yard she don't know where it is and some stuff so it sounds sketchy right off the rip like what it's towed we'll go get it or say something or who got it but nevertheless um days go by days go by we're still looking for it and lo and behold today that investigator called me back and said yeah they found the car the car is actually up at a, a tow yard in north county in florissant st louis um basically on the other side of town for me because i live in south county this is up in north county so you know 30 40 minutes away I'm like well you know that's kind of you know so the uh, investigator told me what you can do is a couple of options one we can tow the vehicle back to you at your location, the address they picked it up from. Two, you can get the vehicle towed to um, a body shop. A body shop, because they said it looked like it was some scratches or something on it, but I, they couldn't tell exactly what scratches or what damage. They don't know if it was previous or not. I'm claiming that it wasn't previous. If it was or not, I want, I want it perfect. When I get it back, I want it perfect. I'm dropping a hammer. Dropping a hammer because that's how we do it. So I'm gonna go over ahead and do that. And uh, or my third option is they want me to go pick up the vehicle from the tow yard. Now that sounds sketchy. One, they tow it to me back in my location. Two, they tow it to the tow yard, or I'm sorry, not from the tow yard to the body shop because they think it's got some scratches or something on it. Or three, I can go pick it up myself. Now, as far as the keys, they say the keys, they don't know where the keys are, but they believe it's in the vehicle because it's a push to start. So if I go there and I got a spare key right here anyway, I already had the spare key just in case I found the vehicle while I was out wheeling and dealing, doing other stuff. I had the keys on me, the second spare keys. Um, so I could either do that. So they said that I could go get the vehicle myself. So if I got to get the vehicle myself, that sounds like work. So I don't like the sound of that already. But what would you do out of those three options? Would you go get the car yourself, get it towed to a body shop, or have it towed back to my your location? Those are the three options he basically gave. Um, but the thing about going to get it myself, I don't like the sound of it because that means, one, I got to go to the police department, do some kind of release paperwork. They're probably going to charge a fee. Uh, two, go to the tow yard. They've had it for, I guess, a couple of days now. That's another fee. Now, the investigator said, yeah, we'll reimburse you for anything that comes up. We'll reimburse you. I'm like, do I want to be reimbursed? Not really. I want them to just pay for it. I don't want to be all in this rabbit hole of confusion. But what would you do in a situation like this? Put it in the comments. So um, some of the things I learned through this uh, first couple of weeks on Turo on the app, one, um, and oh, yeah, I didn't mention I had a GPS tracker on the phone, I mean, or on the car, but for some reason it wasn't working or I thought it wasn't working because it looked like it was in some kind of tow yard or some kind of parking lot. And that's where it was all along, literally exactly where the GPS had it. And I was like, I thought they disabled it or something because we had some storms the other day and it was acting weird and it wasn't picking up a signal. So that day I was like, damn, that's the same day that she's supposed to brought it back. I was thinking they disabled the, the tracker on it, but it really wasn't disabled. It's actually at a tow yard. So those are the three options. Go get the car, have it towed to a body shop or have it towed to uh, me. Um, 
So I already told the investigator, what if I need to get another key? They say, yeah, we'll pay for everything, whatever, right? And they say they're going to compensate me for my time if I have to go do it myself. But my time is more valuable. I don't think they can afford me. I'm at least 200 an hour. I'm getting that attorney money, baby. You want to make pay for my time? Ain't no two dollar hoe. I'm expensive hoe. All right. So that's what we got right there. So like I said, some of the things I learned on this uh adventure so far in these three weeks more than one tracker i only got one on there the little dummy proof one of the ob2 whatever it's called underneath the steering wheel i got one of those on there but from what i understand when i did some more research they say you should have three trackers on your vehicle not one not two but three the little dummy one like i got and two more I got to do some more research to see which ones I'm going to use for that, but I'm definitely going to be adding it because I'm going to be adding the BMW, the white BMW onto the platform as well. That's finally just got approved too. Um, with that vehicle, I ran through an ordeal where I was, wasn't able to list it because it had an open recall. I got the recall fixed and now it can be listed. So, you know, and it was some simple, silly stuff. It wasn't like, oh, major, but I guess it could be. So I got the, I had to turn that vehicle into the dealership for about four or five days, but I got it back now. So that is able to be listed on the platform. The Nissan Rogue is now, once I get it back and figure out all of that, I'll be able to put it back up on the platform, get back to making some shmoney. So that's the uh, situation I find myself in right now. Um, supposedly they're going to reimburse me some money for some of the, you know, missed time that I, I, that the trips that I had booked on the platform. I'm going to see how that goes. I'm going to go through their song and dance with that. Hopefully that's not a big headache. They're going to pay me back for, um, if I got to get a rekey or an extra key, cause that's what I think I'm going to do for that vehicle. Even if it is in a vehicle. Um, the other thing is what else? Anything I can find, you know, I'm gonna say no fuel. I'm charging everything. Every charge you can do on that app, every upsell, Hit them where it hurt, baby. So if this video provided you any type of value, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share. What would you do in this situation? Put a smart little comment down below. And uh, that's where we're at in this Turo business. So, I mean, it seems to be profitable. I was also thinking that they were possibly not going to be able to find a vehicle because it's true that it could have truly been stolen, but it wasn't. It was taken by the police. So that's where we find ourselves right now. So if uh, you have any questions, comments concerns drop them down below in the comments i'll answer as many of them as i can and uh don't forget we'll be going live each and every monday night i got some heavy hitters coming on on a real estate talk if you're into that type of stuff make sure you subscribe to this channel as well so this video here is going to be on its own playlist these turo videos are on their own playlist turo car rental it's this playlist if you want the real estate stuff it's its own playlist as well woke real estate playlist so definitely uh, check that out within the channel. I try to organize it so you can find these different videos and some of the other stuff I'm doing as well. I'm doing some uh, stock trading as well. I'm not an expert in it, but I am uh, buying some stocks, a few, uh, buy them low and sell them high. I sold most of my Bitcoin when it what since it's up to twenty seven thousand. I mean, because I had it from back a couple years ago when it was sitting. I'm like, I'm cashing out. Is that a record high? That's the time to cash out, right? Buy low, sell high. It ain't rocket science. Everybody else is like, oh, I'm finna buy Bitcoin. It's going up. I'm gonna buy it. Why would you buy some at the highest point? Just my philosophy. You can do what you do. Tell me what you think about that as well. So with all that being said, don't forget to follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's YouTube, that's TikTok, that's Clubhouse. Clubhouse is popping too, boy. If you ain't on that Clubhouse, I ain't talking about the Android version. I'm on there too, but I'm on the actual Apple Real version. Go check me out on Clubhouse at Chris Monroe STL. We're doing some great rooms in there, doing some great connecting. Met a lot of great people already on there as well. So, do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me. Peace. Hey, Like